I've been spending the last four years building a food forest garden and homestead in the woods. I had never done anything like this before, so I'm still learning, mostly through trial and error, but it was important for me to grow my own food, have medicinal plants to keep me well, and to do it all in a sustainable way. And that means filling the space with edible perennials, food I can plant once and keeps coming back year after year. The weather has been changing, which has been nice because the mornings have been getting cooler, a sign that fall is almost here. Spring and fall are my favorite times of the year, those in-between seasons, between the two extremes of hot and cold, light and dark. They're transformational times, alchemical, where all the magic lies. It takes a lot of expansive energy during spring to build toward the intensity of growth and abundance that summer brings. And then in fall, all the energy begins to retract, go inward, and prepare the earth for its great sleep. A time of deep restoration. All play their role in the inhale and exhale that this planet takes with each cyclical breath year after year. As the garden begins to change and come to its end, and it has me thinking about next year and the changes I want to make. And one of those changes is adding a lot more edible perennials. Since I started building my food forest, I've been filling it with perennial plants, but still leaving a lot of room for my annual vegetables like kale, broccoli, carrots, and beets. But after taking a foraging walk and learning more about the wild edible plants around me, I got inspired to add even more of these plants to my garden. I was blown away to learn that many of these wild plants contain more nutrients and minerals than a lot of the greens and veggies we commonly use in the kitchen. Many of our ancestors knew this, knew how to use the plants, which ones to pick and which ones to avoid, which plants grow during certain times of the year and why, and even the medicinal benefits the plants have on the body and mind. And even though I took some herbalism courses and have read books and studied some of these amazing plants, which is what inspired me to start making my own medicinal herbal tea blends, I realized that there's still so much more to learn. I just want to briefly interrupt this video to share how I keep my body and mind well and my spirit lifted. I hand blend my own herbal teas and I've been working with the plants, especially the medicinal ones for quite some time now. I'm a firm believer that anything our bodies need can be found on this earth or within us. The plants have healing powers. And now you can find my teas on my website, thenakedgardener.us. One of my herbal blends, Be Me Up, is great for boosting men's libido, balancing hormones, and treating erectile dysfunction. It includes some powerful herbs that are known to be nature's Viagra. There's another called free radical that I especially crafted to reduce free radicals in the body. Because we live in a world that is full of toxins, exposed to radiation from our devices, poor diets, smoking, and chronic stress, our bodies produce too many free radicals and can't handle the overload, which can damage our cells and DNA. This tea is great for counteracting that. My Cloud9 tea helps those with ADHD or depression. And I have other medicinal tea blends that reduce anxiety and relieves digestive issues. And since we are cyclical by nature, when the seasons change, I love making a special blend that supports us in that new season. Right now, it's my summer sun tea, one of my favorites. It keeps my body cool in the heat, keeps me hydrated, and is loaded with vitamins and antioxidants. 
it's so good for the body when the summer heat rises. I love brewing this one in the sun. I just add the plants and water to my tea infuser and keep it in a sunny place. The heat of the sun naturally heats and purifies the water, extracting all of the potent powers from the plants and gives it more sun-powered energy. So good for you. You can find all of my teas on my website, thenakedgardener.us. Thanks for your support. While it's nearly impossible to know everything about every plant on this planet, I figured it's a little less daunting to at least get to know the wild ones that are growing right here in my local area. So I started to do some research and see what perennial plants grow well here, the benefits they provide, and how they help the local environment. When building a food forest, you hope to develop a self-sustaining ecosystem that will provide you with food and plant wisdom and healing for years to come. So that's my goal. Some of the plants I found locally, so I wanted to add them to my garden before my first frost comes in a couple of months.
and make this hole about twice as big as the roots of these this tree so it can have enough space and it's a pretty large tree already so it's gonna take a while to dig this up So I've been planting some perennials in my garden, more of them, um, and I just planted, I found this witch hazel at a local flower shop and plant store, and oh my gosh, it's organic, and it was the only one that they had. I just knew when I saw it, I have to have this in my garden. So I just planted this, it is stunning. I'm so excited to have it here. And I, I'm just really excited um, that it's here in this garden now. Um, I also, let me show you, I was out here, look at, this is my elderberry. Poor thing, it really got attacked this year. 
it was just infested. Um, I had to do a pretty major pruning job on it right now, but um, I have to prune even more of this tree later this fall, um, as soon as the weather starts to change and the plant goes a little bit more dormant. Um, so I do have um, a couple other plants that I had put into the garden. Um, my new Chinese date, jujube. So that's exciting. I love dates. And so I'm excited that that's here too. That's gonna get really big. Um, so I figured that's a really good spot for it. Um, and then let's see, where did I put? Oh, let me show you over here. So this is an arugula tree and the leaves are going to be edible. Um, and actually it's very nutritious. So I'm really excited about that because that's going to provide me some greens um, consistently throughout the year um, as that plant continues to grow. And then I also had added some Jerusalem artichokes, which artichokes, I don't know if you guys know this, but it is such a good plant, um, a perennial plant. So it's gonna come back year after year. And it is such a good plant um, obviously you eat the tubers and it is so good for detoxifying the body, removing toxins um, from the, the system. And it's just really good for eradicating some of the unfortunate things that we are constantly coming into contact with through our foods, our environment that can be very harmful and detrimental to our health. And so artichokes is a really good thing to eat to combat that and to reduce the effect of that on your body. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. I've been wanting to add that to my garden for quite some time. Um, it can be really difficult to start from seed. Um, and even though I didn't try it necessarily from seed, I actually got these starts from a local shop. Uh, again, grown organically, chemical free. Um, and as soon as I saw them, I just had to get them. So I'm really excited and hopefully that's gonna be a good spot for them in the garden, we'll see. Um, and then I also added um, uh, some chestnuts to the garden, so that's really cool. And I just planted some new seeds. Um, I actually planted some, let's see, I, I planted bloodroot, uh, which is something that I had seen on my walk through the forest, my foraging walk, and I had learned some more about bloodroot. So I'm really excited um, and hopefully starting it from seed, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I planted the seed, hopefully it's going to work out, um, but I do have some more seeds if I need to start that um, indoors and transplant. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I also had planted uh, some other seeds too, like wild leek, wild leeks. So I'm excited um, about that being added to the garden too. Um, I figured that this would be a good spot for it. Um, on the other side of the garden, you can tell here the upper half of my garden gets a ton of sun. Um, the other half can be a little bit more shaded. Um, so in this bed right here is where I put the wild leeks. So hopefully that's going to be a good spot for it. But all in all, I already have a lot of perennials in my garden. And um, of course, since the beginning of me starting this four years ago, I knew that it was important to have a garden full of perennials, trees, shrubs that will come back year after year. And so since then, I have added more and more every year to my garden. Um, and I've had to even move some things around that wasn't really growing as well. Um, because of course, as you start building a food forest uh, or any garden for that matter, you have to observe, um, see what does well where, um, make changes when you need to. And so some of the blueberries, for example, I had them a little bit more widespread throughout the garden um, and then later found out that they do better when you actually group them a little closer together. And so I actually made those changes last year. And so I'm hoping that I'm gonna see a lot more growth. I saw some blueberries on it this past season, 
the birds got a hold of them before I could. Um, so going forward, I'll have to, of course, cover these up um, so that, that way I can actually enjoy the blueberries. Um, but so far uh, this year, they started to show signs of doing much, much better. And so I have another one that is closer to the chickens that I think I'm gonna move over here as well. Um, and then I also have, of course, my pear tree, uh, or actually my peach tree, my peach tree, and then I have my two pear trees on the outside of the garden. But those I'm gonna move into the garden uh, come fall when that plant, those trees go dormant. Uh, that's the safest time to actually move those. And so I'm going to move them in the garden into these sunny locations because over there, even though it gets a little bit of sun, not nearly as much as it needs, especially for a fruit tree like that. So I'm going to move those into the garden um, later this season. And so those will have a much better chance of growing bigger, better, stronger, and um, start producing some fruit for us because this peach tree already produced a peach. My first peach of the season of this tree ever. Uh, I was so excited when I saw that. Gives me hope. It's doing pretty well. I'll have to keep an eye on all of the fruit trees because of course they can be prone to some pests. Um, the ones I got were definitely varieties that are disease resistant. So hopefully that will be a good thing for me, but something to watch for. And I have things like evening primrose as well. So um, gooseberry, I actually had added those. Um, last year to my garden, the raspberry, I have black cap raspberries. Um, I'm actually going to move some of these as well. So this one over here, I'm going to move closer to the others. And then I'm actually gonna put a raised bed right here so that I can actually add more raised beds to my garden for especially growing the things that I do enjoy, like the annuals such as my winter squash. This is just taken over this bed. And then I also have sweet potatoes growing in the other one right now. Um, and it's just so much better for these types of vegetables because I've tried growing, growing them in the ground. They did not do so well. Um, so hopefully adding a couple more of these raised beds will allow me to be able to grow some of the annuals that I do love in more of a contained kind of way. And then of course intermix with some of my other plants too. Like I have my chard here. Rhubarb I just added as well this year. And it is just already doing so good. It loves this spot. So I'm really happy that it's happy. And, um, and then of course around this bed, I've just been adding some of my annuals like kale, collards and things like that. And this planter, I actually had cut a tree down on our property that was dying. And so this tree, I was able to repurpose some of the logs from. And so I hollowed out one of them and used it as a planter. And you know what? This tree planter is just, I've, I've never seen so much growth out of it. Um, it is just amazing and makes me actually want to add a lot more of these tree planters in my garden. And so I'm actually working on hollowing another one out to add that to the garden. I love how whimsical it looks. Um, and then I also love the fact that the inside of the tree, as it continues to decompose, it is just providing a, just a life of microbes, fungi for the plants to just thrive and so that's what it's doing it's thriving there and all the plants looked so amazingly healthy the entire season and i think it also retains a lot more water in the tree as well for the plants and so that's another really good plus and so i'm going to do more of those um and then i also have ooh, this is one i'm really excited about my fig tree so i'm so so excited to have this here. I have tried growing fig in pots a couple, actually I think the two prior years. And the first time I grew it, I had winterized it in my greenhouse. 
uh, over winter and the mice got in there and actually just ate and destroyed all the roots. So it did not survive. The next year, I actually had a new puppy and he actually ate the entire tree. Ugh. So I was so sad, devastated. And this is number three. And I decided to plant it directly in the garden instead of in a pot. And so I think um, I can already tell it's just doing so well. It loves it. So the, the real test will be, of course, in winter. I got a very cold, hardy variety, though, uh, especially for my zone. And so I think that it's going to do well. I'll just have to be really careful, make sure that it's protected over winter so that this plant just keeps coming back year after year because I love figs. It's one of my favorite fruits. So I'm really, really excited about that. And you can see here, this is wild grape just growing. And I actually did pick off a couple grapes this year from this. This is kind of new, it popped up. We have them all over our property though. And so I've kind of just left it alone um, and it is just going wild. Um, it loves this spot right here. So I'm letting it take over. Um, I did have to prune some of it back though, um, but you can see my, my blackberry is kind of growing a little bit into it. So I have to watch that a little bit, but it is loving it, uh, loving this location. And then I have a ton of comfrey this grows back and spreads like crazy uh, year after year. And even though comfrey has so many good, good benefits, I mean, it's, you can, it is actually beneficial from the root all the way to the leaves. It is such a wonderful plant, it has so many variety of uses and I, I love it. However, it just can easily take over and it really has. In fact, last year, late last year, I actually had some help from my nephew to remove a lot of this from this bed and it came back. So it's really hard to get rid of uh, once you start growing it. Um, but I have other things like sorrel growing in my garden, which is another great source of greens um, that is a perennial plant. So it keeps coming back every year. I have another one here as well. Um, and then I just have a ton of other medicinal type of herbs and plants growing. This pokeweed is another perennial that just popped up in my garden and has taken over. I've had to prune this a couple times already this season, but it loves that spot. And so you can see I have just a lot of uh, perennials already in the garden whether it's the blackberries, the blueberries, raspberries, gooseberries, um, and all the fruit trees, and some of the other medicinal uh, herbs and plants like the uh, comfrey. Um, and it's really, really good to fill your, your garden with a lot of these plants that just come back year after year and they get bigger and better year after year too. So um, I have other things outside of the garden on the property too that I had planted. Um, such as hazelnut. Um, so those are doing well and growing. I planted those a couple years back. So that's doing really well. I have chokeberry, um, AKA aronia. Um, that's here growing on the property. I actually have a Myers lemon. So this is um, a new plant I added. And it's also of course going to require a little bit of babying um, because it's more of a tropical kind of plant. But you can already see here, wow, look at that. That's exciting. Uh, this is the first year with this and I'm already seeing that. Um, and then I just added this turmeric and planted that. So I'm really excited to see what that's gonna look like as well.
So that's the garden. Uh, that, those are the perennials, the elderberry. Um, I have mulberry as well in the garden. Um, I don't think I showed you guys that. That's doing so, so good. It's the first year with the mulberry. And this is a dwarf mul mulberry, and it's so huge. It's already way taller than me, um, which is amazing. But this thing, look at that. It is doing so good. It loves this spot. And so I'm so excited uh, for the future years with that tree to see what kind of fruit I'll get off of that. Um, so all good things. I love the perennial plants. Um, they do require less maintenance from me. And that's one of the reasons why I love adding perennials because I don't have a ton of time. I'm trying to build a homestead here, not just a garden, a homestead. And so I have goats to take care of, chickens to take care of. I have other major projects on my hands all the time. And so the less time I have to spend in the garden, the better. And that way I can enjoy being in there when I am in there. And, um, and of course be able to enjoy the abundance of the fruit that grows from these beautiful plants, the medicine that comes from these beautiful plants. And uh, that is something that I wanna just add a lot more of this year and going forward. It's just a lot more of these perennials because in my opinion, that's just the way to go. And as much as I can add that is native to the area, the better as well. Learning more about wild plants and taking many walks through the woods makes me wonder if humans were actually meant to be nomadic and not the stationary beings we've become. When you walk through a forest and see it full of life with no help by humans to make that happen, you can see the magic and intelligence of nature. And the deer and other creatures who eat from these plants to stay alive, leaving no trace of destruction, no signs that they were even there to begin with. Much of the plant still intact, as though no one ate anything off of it. The deer doesn't wipe out or deplete its resources. It takes just what it needs and moves on. It's as though the deer and the forest have an unspoken agreement. I'll take care of you and you take care of me. It's beautiful and a lesson I take to heart as I go about my journey on this earth.